Hey there, Mitches and Mitchettes! Welcome to Baywatch HD The Follow-Up. Three years ago, Baywatch was remastered and re-released in glorious HD, finally more easily available for public consumption in all of its oceany goodness. This came with the usual pitfalls of HD remasters, cropped in footage, new music, etc., but overall, it was pretty damn cool to see it looking so slick. And at the time, admittedly, I hadn't been able to sit down and watch all 200 plus episodes and do a side-by-side -side comparison, and I didn't know as much as I do now about the process of releases like this. Well, things have changed. I did, in fact, watch these episodes alongside their SD counterparts, study up a little, and take copious notes. And here's where things get interesting. So let's take an even closer look at Baywatch The Remaster. First of all, Baywatch Hawaii has also been remastered. At the time of the video's release, the only streaming service that carried Baywatch was Amazon Prime, which still doesn't include Hawaii as seasons 10 and 11. They do, however, now include both seasons as a separate show. When Baywatch was put onto Hulu, they included all 11 seasons as one package. I just sort of guessed back then that it wasn't included because it wasn't as easy to remaster, but now I don't know. Hawaii is weird. Some people consider it a separate show like Baywatch Nights, but like, they just move to Hawaii and continue what little story they have. It's the last two seasons. Baywatch Nights, they've still decided as far as a remaster goes, can rot in hell. <laughs> That possible reboot they were shopping around almost happened, by the way. According to Backstage.com, in May 2020, they were holding auditions for something called Baywatch San Diego, centered on a single father with twin girls. May 2020. So, you can probably guess why that all fell apart. I did want to mention, while I'm talking about the different streaming services though, Prime still has its issues. They did fix the repeats in the bungled episode order, but some of the names are still wrong. For instance, a little help is a little help for my friends, and someone to Baywatch over you is someone to Baywatch over your. Curiously, one episode includes a shot where the video is too far over and the audio track is visible. This shot has been fixed in the Hulu version, so I don't know if Prime maybe got an earlier release or what. This brings me to a suspicion I have about this remaster, and that they maybe bit off a bit more than they could chew and rush some things, and that they were still working on it when they were releasing it. Because you know what I was talking out of my butt about in the first vid? What exactly was done to capture the film for this release? I mistakenly compared it to this Star Trek The Next Generation remaster, where they painstakingly went through the film to faithfully recreate the show as aired, when really, the Buffy comparison was more accurate. What they did, in simplified terms, is take the raw footage and run it through a computer, where the computer decided what matched the original episodes and pieced it together in a way that seemed framed correctly for widescreen. I guess. I don't claim to be an expert on how exactly it works, but it's an automated process. Which is why things, you know, sometimes look weird. And yes, the new cropping means sometimes equipment is visible that we didn't see previously. But I don't want to take away credit from the people who worked on this, because there has to be a little more to it than that. Certain things had to have been edited manually. And the color correction I praised was done by real people, and I think the choice to deeply saturate the colors was the correct one. But in some instances, the show didn't have HD footage to work with. It appears they lost some of the film, as certain scenes are just blown up and upscaled SD footage. Prominently, almost all of the footage of Summer from the boob job montage seems to be missing, and they've subsequently replaced it with new footage in the season 4 intro. This montage of Neely is edited significantly differently than how it originally aired, which also leads me to believe they lost part of the footage. Some episodes, it isn't really clear to me why things are edited differently, or why they've used alternate shots, but it's likely because a piece of it was missing, or an effect was done on tape, and they had to edit it manually. They've tragically removed this mullet guy from The Sky is Falling, but you can still hear his voice yelling at everyone like a ghost. Check this out! Check this out! And in the case of a lot of the stock footage, they didn't have access to the original prints, so they've just replaced them with sometimes noticeably newer footage. No care seems to be put into using period-appropriate video, and whenever sharks show up in particular, they don't even bother using footage of a consistent species. 
The hilarious shot of Jill getting eaten by the Shark Attack 3 stock footage has been replaced, but when they show it again in a later episode, they've used the original stock footage. That actually happens a lot with stuff that's a flashback or a montage involving footage from previous episodes. They just blow up the SD footage and call it a day, I guess because they'd have to go back and find the film for each individual episode. But that's not consistent either, because in Freefall, both montages summing up the previous seasons are in HD. The male ego is a disease. Frequently, the montages have insert shots replaced depending on if they have the HD footage handy or how much work they wanted to put into it. This actually improves this montage where Stephanie appears to be shocked that an overweight person might exist and instead makes it perplexing as to what she's even reacting to. Occasionally, the B-roll includes cast members long gone, such as this case when Shawnee randomly reappears in this montage in season four. This is perhaps to balance out the fact that they replace the shot at the beginning of River of No Return part two, where Shawnee is magically back on the raft after being kidnapped, which I think is the only case of them fixing an error the original edit made. In this shot here, uh, they seem to have forgotten to take out the original shot that they've placed in the corner, probably to get the timing right of the, the baby ass. The effects and filters on all the montages had to be redone, and for the most part, try to stay faithful, but sometimes there are differences in what they choose to include. Your mileage may vary on how much that means to you. In the previous video, I touched on the fact that the special effects were completely redone for this release but that's not exactly true upon further inspection. Depending on how complicated or time-consuming it might be, sometimes the effects were redone and sometimes they just blew up the old footage again. They did, however, put in a lot of work on the intros. I noted before that they completely redid the season one intro to fit Baywatch's signature opening song, but what I didn't say is that they redid every single season to make it HD. All of the text had to be completely recreated, and the fact I didn't notice speaks volumes about the effort put in to faithfully copy the original. The one it's most noticeable on is season eight, because that's when the show decided to retool their look. The opening logo is slightly different, and for some reason, they've decided to leave off the text saying what characters the actors play. Overall, good job, guys. The intros look great. They knew they were going to be used in front of every episode, so they made sure to put in the effort. However, there were some things that got overlooked by making this a largely automated process. This isn't something unique to Baywatch's HD remaster, but any day for night color correction that would have been added in post is just left out. I can tell you, this night blindness is the worst thing for me. It's a little easier to forgive for getting the day for night shots than some of these bungles, however. Yes. There you are. I've been looking for you everywhere. Hello, Gladys. No, I know I have six. If you could just look for the six back. Five. Three. That Gladys Knight footage was from The Runaways, by the way. The episode that keeps on giving in this editing travesty. More interesting to me isn't what was left out, but what was added in. Hilariously, they've added 720p to this shot of Garner recording Mitch. Yeah, sure. Sometimes they've added logos where there wasn't one originally, and sometimes they've interlaced the footage. And in Beach Blast, they put Jenny McCarthy onto a TV for a shot that didn't do that in the original airing. Confusing. Here's something very intriguing, though. In the episode Snake Eyes, they replaced a scene of Mitch and Hobie's teacher with a scene of Court and Eddie harpooning a watermelon? My best guess is that the watermelon scene was cut out in some edits for syndication, and possibly the teacher scene included a copywritten song in the background? Very strange, though. As far as I could tell, I didn't notice any other episodes, including scenes I haven't seen before. I did appreciate seeing Court harpoon a watermelon, and it was, in fact, the better scene. Speaking of syndicated cuts, they've used the two-part version of Nightmare Bay instead of the full 90-minute one, which means a bunch of stuff is cut out. The same thing appears to have happened with Vacation, even though the version I have is the two-part version and still includes the scenes the remaster cut out. That one has much more significant edits, but fortunately, a lot of it is the Guido stuff, so I think it's the better version for it. Western Exposure and Beauty and the Beast are both missing scenes that don't include any music or anything, so it's anyone's guess as to why they're gone. Syndicated cut? They lost the footage and got lazy? There's many possibilities. Anywho, I think the big deal for a lot of people was the music replacements. As I said before, they replaced over 300 songs, and that's a huge undertaking, one I am not envious of. I did, however, kinda not listen to most of them prior to making that video, so, um, here's some things I noticed. 
This is borderline copyright infringy, guys. Some of these songs are such literal knockoffs of the music they're replacing, it's absolutely hilarious. My personal favorite is the I'm Too Sexy replacement, I've Got It Going On. So good. Dude, if anyone cared about Baywatch half as much as me, they would be sued. This is doubly funny in the case of Hulk Hogan's replacement song for American Made, which was already a ripoff of his WWF theme song Real American, making it a ripoff of a ripoff. And in some instances, the captions just straight up credit the original song. I could go on and on, but here is just a small sampling of what you're in for should you take the plunge into Baywatch HD. But even if a song isn't a direct ripoff, there is some choice music in this, guys. You may not be hearing the original 90s goodness, but this new stuff is pretty damn entertaining. I particularly liked the Mitch and Hobie montage that seemed to more overtly imply that Mitch hates his son, which we all knew anyway. Some songs are technically trying to be more modern, and it does throw me off to hear them mentioning things that technically weren't around back then, but for the most part, I do kind of get this delightful throwback vibe. When things were a little more cheesy but earnest, and also way too literal. Please enjoy! A suspicion some of these songs were not in fact produced for this release and were stock songs that they paid for, but that will have to be determined by someone with a better ear for that sort of thing than me. Confusingly and tragically, they've removed the Pelican Man song, and that was one that they produced for Baywatch in the first place. I don't know how they determined what songs to keep and which ones to get rid of, as some licensed music was actually kept, but there you go. But you know what's easier than making a new song? Just cutting one out. See if you can spot where the music videos were removed in these edits. Morning, CJ. I can't believe it. This time, do it like we're on MTV. You were supposed to be home over an hour ago. MTV! Yeah! I'm not really sure what's the better option here. The edits where they abruptly remove a song, or when they just dub over someone with something they clearly weren't singing. For some reason, they've dubbed Stephanie over with a man in this clip? I love the way you smile at me. Keep being you, Baywatch. But hey, if you're still upset about the music changes, guess what? Our friend Germany has come through once again. They were so darn steamed about this that they decided to include the original SD episodes with the proper music on the Blu-rays. So if you're looking to enjoy the show how it originally aired, it's now available for anyone to watch. And unlike the American Blu-ray release, they include the last two seasons and don't package the discs in cheap CD slipcovers. Upon a closer look, Baywatch HD is both a bigger mess and a more entertaining delight than I gave it credit for. It's kind of amazing that Baywatch can find new ways to entertain me, but this is definitely a different watch than the original run. I still maintain that this is overall a positive development, because I like that more people have access to the show. With all of its flaws, Baywatch HD remains true to the spirit of the series. It looks pretty, it's got a lot of issues, and you're gonna laugh.